Hello, good people. I hope you're doing well. We are back with the Technomancer. We just finished our initiation ritual, and now we are actually home free to do whatever we like. And what I want to do is some side quests. Now, this first level, you can hold down F to pull up your mini map. Very useful. You're going to see me looting trash cans and refuse piles to try to get some materials that we can craft with later. Um, the very first thing that we're going to focus on is just kind of building up our character and not going with the main story, but pursuing some side missions. Great Master said the caravan would be right here, but the stand looks like it's been deserted. I'll question the neighboring merchants. So this is a great way to start. And we're going to do just that. We're going to start on this little side mission to figure out what happened with these merchants that we were supposed to talk to. Mr. Manser, it's a pleasure to make your request. Big on weaponry, I hope. What can I get you? I was expecting a caravan in the stall next door to buy a few things. They arrived yesterday, but truth be told, I think they found some trouble. I wasn't there when it happened, but from what I heard, some people were looking to talk. And talking turned to shouting, and after that, they were seen down in the slums, I, I hear, and then they were dragged into some warehouse. Whatever they did, they're in big trouble now. If you're looking to help them, you better find them fast. Okay, well, it seems like we gotta go figure out where they've been abducted. Now, this guy sells weapons, in case you couldn't tell. They're all, like, the next... We're at tier zero. These are, like, tier one weapons. We are not gonna be picking up anything from him, because we're, we're gonna have access to some of the stuff that he sells and even better stuff quite quickly but i'll show you where that is in a second let's talk to some more merchants there's one other merchant in this area technomancer hello hello looking for some medicine drugs ingredients maybe whoops hello hello can you help me i'm looking for any information on the caravan that sets up in the stall over there I don't know. My, my memory sometimes needs uh, incentive to remember. Now, we could threaten him, but our charisma, we didn't put points into it, so I'm just going to give him the flat serum. It's not the 10 is nothing. How's this for a memory booster? Oh my, perfect. Why do you want to give threat? What I'm about to tell you could get me killed. You've heard the tale of the boring, uh, of the underworld. So these overpriced foreign merchants did something to piss them off. Didn't pay their right of passage or protection serum or something. Whatever the hell it was. They were kidnapped. That's all I know. Where they are, or even if they're still alive, I haven't the damnedest clue. For that, you'll have to ask the boring. Now do Joe a favor. Take this herb and get the hell out before you raise suspicions. <laughs> now this merchant sells um, consumables, crafting material, and crafting plans. In order to upgrade to the next level, you need to not only have the crafting skill, but have the crafting plans. We're going to come by and pick those up later. We want to pick up an item that's going to boost our charisma by one, so that way we can get discount prices on all those items, and we can actually save some money. Now, we are right now in the exchange. That's the first level. That's like the top level where all the... The military, the government, and the merchant quarter is. We're gonna head downstairs to the slums, which I don't have to tell you what that is. And we're gonna see a few more opportunities open up there, and especially a fantastic opportunity to get some really good items and some really good gear. One of the important things to remember is enemies respawn when you leave the area. So. That means if you find some enemies that are dropping items that you like, you can literally just leave, come back, and they'll all be right there, all with different things for you to take off of their warm corpses. Not that we're killing anybody. And that actually is what we're going to do with those Vori. But first, we have to find them. Now, I really like all the environments in this game, and I, I love the way how they kind of make it. Like, look at this. It reminds me a lot of Midgar from Final Fantasy VII. I just love that kind of like crappy urban feel. 
So you want to keep an eye out for these guys because most of them actually have guns. And you want to be careful, oh, just like that. See, just that one hit took us down so far. Now these guys aren't Vori, but they aren't Vori, but they do have loot tables that are similar. So we're going to see what they have on them. Because of that one point in agility, we're actually going to have the opportunity to find some really, really good stuff if we get lucky. But not in that case. But those are not the people that we're going to be uh, farming for loot. There's actually someone down here that can give us a little bit of a hand in our. Our quest to find some better gear and to find some better equipment to help us out. And we're going to see if we can get to him. I'm not 100% sure where he is on the map, but I think we we'll, yeah. Perfect. Okay, we're in exactly the right spot. Say hello to Scott. Hi, boy. I have a favor to ask you. I've lost something. What'd you lose? Uh, I mentioned one thing. Oh, I am sorry. In fact, it's about a friend. Charles? You remember Charles? No, you can't remember. Silly <laughs> me, you never met him. Anyway, Charles is a friend. A scientist co-worker. He was way more successful than I, I must say. So, he's a friend, and I lost him. It looks like he disappeared, and I am a bit worried. I know that he was doing some sensitive research. Important. Maybe he ran into problems because of that. Anyhow, it's hard to tell. How do you want me to find him? He has an assistant. Very nice. She used to make delicious pastries. Unless I'm mixing her up with someone else. Anyway, he had an assistant. I'm pretty sure of it. I'll go find her. She must know what happened to him. And if she does, it'll turn out the professor is just in a conference somewhere. Maybe. It's true I don't get invited to conferences as often as I used to. It's rather unfair. I used to love the cocktails they serve. Oh, right. So now we have the prompt. This is the same Scott from the beginning that we saw. Uh, I honestly get kind of tired of the character and all the rambles that he goes on. I mean, they kind of explain it more, and as we'll get to know him, he becomes an integral part of the story. But right now, he is super valuable because he can actually join our team. Now, whenever you have someone that's joining your team as a companion, you have full access to getting them to follow you around. You can access their inventory and you can see their different kinds of statistics, what they have, what they don't have. And this is actually important for when you're equipping them later. Now, for Scott, he, he all he uses is a pistol. He doesn't put anything in his other hand. So we should give him some basic equipment. We'll let him borrow the cadet stuff because he can't equip anything else. He's already got worker shoes. I have no helmet to give him, but that'll change in a second. Now to talk about Scott in combat, you have three different options whenever you're looking at um, ordering around your companions. You have the default, you have usually an offensive choice, and then a defensive choice. In this case, the way to explain how uh, Scott works he will pull out a gun occasionally and shoot at enemies. He can heal himself with an unlimited amount of uh, stim packs that he carries, like what we were doing earlier. And he can load one into his gun and shoot it at an ally or you and heal you. Now, it's not as it's more useful in the beginning than it is later on because a the heal the amount of damage that enemies can do to you is a lot faster than it can heal, and b al, um, your companion's health they, it goes up as they level up, and so. When he tries to heal them, it'll heal them for a lot less than what it normally does. But um, if you you can tell him to specialize in healing by picking this one, the doctor tactic. But it's kind of a uh, it's a poor decision to go either way because he just doesn't fire that often. He doesn't heal that often. So he's really he's not that great of a companion. He's more of a a decoy in battle. The other thing that he does is he can, if an enemy gets close, he'll actually butt them back with his pistol. 
but I'm not sure how to, what that's based on, because a lot of times I'll just see him whacking an enemy, it won't do any damage, it won't knock them back, and he just dies. So to demonstrate, we are going to fight all the these guys here, but there's a lot of them, so we're going to put down a... Can I take them? Yeah, we'll, we'll put down a mine first. I said a mine. Alright. Now, because we have them set to offense, we should be focusing on hitting stuff more than anything else. Alright, I might have bitten off more than I can chew here. Whenever you're in a situation where you're feeling like it's a bit more than you can handle, just put down one of those mines, I'll take care of everything. Alright, this is probably a bad idea. It's this pistol guy that's giving me so much trouble. If I can take care of him. There we go. No problem, we just used two of our hunting traps and like four of our med packs. But hopefully we'll get some really good stuff. The other really nice thing, and the reason we use Scott in the future, I mean like when quests don't tell us to, is because as a passive bonus, he actually, uh, it doesn't show it here, but he gives a passive life regeneration, which is super helpful. And later on when we get him to trust us more, he'll give us a side benefit of science which is a skill that we're not going to be putting into a lot, of, a lot of points. It's not that useful overall in the game. You only use it a handful of times. But when we do use it, he'll be there to help us out. So that's pretty cool. And that full void jacket was exactly what I was looking for. So let's, let's equip some of this stuff that we just found. The full void jacket. It's a full jacket, which means it's got full upgrade slots. And most importantly... It has a bonus to traps and lock picking. So now we can actually unlock doors, which is fantastic. Um, the doctor's coat is actually gonna give us a bonus to science. Thanks, Scott, very very generous of you. Um, we're gonna put that. We'll be upgrading things later. And we also got, we nabbed a gun. Now see, this one actually has a cooldown speed of 25%, which means that it's gonna recharge even faster so we can get off more shots with it. And what this means is that there's a mod slot in there. I believe this one is damage. So we're actually going to be doing more damage each shot with this than what we would with the basic nail gun because of that upgrade. And then we also picked up a cleaver, which is just all around better. So we're getting some solid upgrades. I actually think, did we get shoes there too? We did. We got Technomancer boots. I don't really care about that. So now we're just going to keep, uh, let's check out this exclamation point point. see what quest is over here. We're going to have to hop over this fence. And, oh, I think this is the assistant that Scott wanted to talk to. Hey there, I'm looking for Charles Seeker. You know where I could find him? Hmm, and you are? Zachariah Manser. The professor and I have a mutual friend who's worried about him. You know the feeling. I haven't seen him for days. I'm Veronica Seeker, the professor's assistant. I got a message informing me he had taken an impromptu vacation, but it's not like him. He didn't even like to sleep, said it just wasted time. Even more than likely in the middle of the research he was doing. Let's let's go for this 50-50. Yeah, seems a bit off, doesn't it? The professor was supposed to start some research with a friend of mine as well. I'm sure he'd already started work on it before leaving. You know anything about it? Of course. I was All right, involved with nice. the professor's research, though I shouldn't discuss it with anyone without his consent. But with that last name, Manser, I suppose this technomancy research is of particular interest to you. Otherwise, most people barely bat an eye towards the scientific aspects of technomancer powers. If you're concerned that the message wasn't really from the professor, did you report his disappearance? To 
The authorities? Of course not. The authorities, Mr. Manser, have far more pertinent issues than this, which I am sure will work itself out in time. Now, if you'll excuse me. Veronica. I know I'm not exactly a prime physical specimen, but I should hope that I am still not so forgettable. Unless I'm wrong and we do not know each other. What is, after all, certain in this life? It might all just be a confounding dream. Like the one I had last night, where trying to wear my pants is a shirt I found my nose got goggles in. Professor Scott? Huh? Oh my... Hello! I am so sorry I did not recognize you. You should have told me earlier to save me from this embarrassment. Was it you who was planning the collaboration on the Technomancer research? I'm afraid the professor's vocal railings against the ASC and their ceaseless power grabs might have finally come back to bite him. He would even preach to his colleagues and the listeners at conferences. I would give anything to be wrong, of course, but hope is oftentimes incongruous with the reality we must come to face. That was a lot of big words. So basically, her professor that she was working with was doing research into the biology behind how technomancer science works. Zachariah. And now he's disappeared. Could you... Anyway, could I talk to you in private? What's going on? I know that I'm asking a lot from you, but I was wondering if maybe you could continue to investigate. You are someone important now. You know a lot of people. They can tell you if Veronica's suspicions are justified. I could probably talk about it with my captain. Tap into some contacts in the know. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I want to be sure. I think that you need to recover his latest research. I strongly believe that. Besides what he said, he found something dangerous. The ASC. They're thugs. We must not allow sensitive scientific research to fall into their hands. The risks are too high. I'll see what I can do, but I doubt that Veronica will give me Charles' documents willingly. She's very protective of her boss's work. So the ASC are like a secret spy network that are monitoring. Why did Charles start getting into politics? Politics has no place in the scientific community. It's such a plebeian concept. Now, look at Paul the Water. She's like a lost soul. Like I was saying, the ASC is a spy network that kind of monitors and reports on all the uh, activities of citizens. And they've lately come into great power, and they've been using it in a lot of really naughty ways, like putting that the professor away from complaining about all the things that they do. Now, before I forget, we're actually going to switch Scott to Doctor, because he's not going to be doing much damage with this stupid pistol, so I'm more focused on him just staying alive and acting as a decoy for me. Now, unfortunately, if we talk to Veronica, she's going to say we need more proof. I'm looking for access to the professor's compiled research documents. Might be a big help to me. It's just not my work to share, Zachariah. If he came back, I don't think he'd be too pleased to find out I handed it away. You ever find out what happened to him? I'm still looking for leads. Just finding dead end after dead end. I'm still looking. I keep hoping he just took a vacation. I know better. That man could never relax. Let me know if you hear anything, will you? So, until we get more leads, we're not going to be hearing anything from her. So we need to check out other avenues of research and try to figure out what happened to him. We're going to put that one on the back burner. And what we are going to do is, as I said, things that we knock out will just respawn. So these nice ladies that we were talking to, <laughs> I talking to earlier are going to give us another chance to relieve them of some items that they may or may not want. Well, they probably wanted it because we had to knock them out to take it. But this is how we're actually going to start equipping ourselves and finding items to help us out. This is super important on the hardest difficulty because we're going to need every little advantage that we can get. Every item is going to make a difference. Like there, this is the gun that I was talking about. Now, this one has a lower chance of disruption, but look at that, it has a cooldown speed of 50%, which means we can fire off like six shots now. Let me see. Yeah, six shots. That's huge. That's immense. We can practically kill someone with that just from that with an extra lightning bolt thrown in there. 
We also picked up a Vori jacket that we can give to Scott to give him a little bit more defense. We just need some extra pants. Well, we can give him the doctor's pants. Because I kind of want to hold on to that cadet jacket. You'll never know if you need it. But once we run into more of those Vori, like what we were fighting earlier, we'll be able to actually fight them and keep taking their stuff, coming back, taking their stuff, and start to gear ourselves up. As well, any extra stuff that we find, we can break down or we can, you know, we can sell it for money to buy other stuff. This is the best way to kind of get yourself set up, put yourself on the right foot forward for getting ready for the rest of the game. You see, like those... Look at that. He's almost dead. And now he is dead. Now the one the one bad thing about Scott's ability is he actually has to hit you with it. Oh. Whoops. Whoops! Let's try that again. Now this is... The game is going to be the hardest at the beginning when we don't have all this extra gear and all these talents to hide behind. So, if you see me dying, it's mostly going to be here and uh, there. Now, luckily, we did get to keep all the stuff that we brought forth. So, we hopefully that doesn't become too common of an occurrence. Actually, I'm going to set Scott to just default. Because if I'm rolling around like that, he's not going to be able to hit me with his healing syringe. And I just need, I don't, I don't know, like, whatever, Scott. But we do need to fight these guys. most important thing is just like staying safe here. Actually, you know, in this situation, we might want to use the staff. I'm going to try it. I'm going to go risky. Uh oh, that was not worth it. Let's wait for that extra health regen to kick in. Whoops. Okay, we need that pronto or we're gonna die to the poison. And as you can see there, dodging actually does interrupt the healing. Was, uh, that was pretty exciting. Hopefully whatever they had was worth it. Now, we're going to be able to make more healing, uh, healing injections later on. So hopefully this extra stuff that we're picking up now can contribute to the kind of deficit that we're building. <laughs> There's another precision gun. Did I equip Scott with the gun that I found? Let me see. I think, so he doesn't have agility so he can't use it. Okay, here we go. He's already using one, but the one I gave him is just a little better because of the mod that it came with. Where do we want to go next? We, there's a, a hidden alcove that we're trying to make our way towards. Now we could go... This is the Vori base right here. We could go in there and talk to him here? to try to find out what happened with those merchants. The professor is. Besides the guys who made uh, him here, it's this guy right here. Anton Rogue knows everything and everyone in Ophir. All right. Yes, yes. I Sorry, pal. Nobody enters this office if they got no pass. But that luckily, right, pal, we I'm do an have officer a pass. and a technomancer, and I'm here to see Anton Rogue. I think you should let me in. You even know who Anton Rogue is? He's the big fucking balls here. The boss. I don't care if you're a damn general. Get the hell out of here. 
What else? Show it to me. All right, fine. You can come in even though you're dressed like... Stole it from one of our guys. With that hall pass, these guys won't bother us. So we can come and go as we please. But we do not want to go in there yet. There is a, uh, a different approach that we can take. But first we have to figure out where... I believe it's right here. Yeah, so there's a little hidden hidden back alley here that we're going to be uh, going into. If this before. warehouse belongs to Anton Rogue and you ain't him. Of course we got to take care of these guys. Now as you can tell with the the stab is actually it's it ha doesn't have the most reliable hit rate. And if you run back far enough, they actually will just they'll, they'll, uh, just completely despawn. They'll get all their health back. But if you can manage to kill them while, before they get back to their spot, they'll actually be knocked out. So it's kind of a cheesy tactic. But in the beginning game, it's not a bad idea to take advantage of little tricks like this. See? Because this we didn't. Warehouse belongs to him. Oh, guys, let's get him. Now let's actually try to kill him without running away this time. Oh yeah, we got him. No problem. And he actually took out Scott there. But we put him down anyway. So let's check and see what they had. One of them should have a key for us. There's a full void jacket we can give to Scott to help him out a little bit more. A curved dagger and a high resistance gun. We'll have to see if that one's any better than the one that we're using right now. There we go, there's the warehouse key. So we can sneak in and free those merchants. So let's see. The curved dagger does a little bit more damage but has slightly less chance of disruption and slightly higher chance of critical hit. We'll take the cleaver, because, right, so, this is just raw damage, chance of disruption is when you hit them, the chance of them just recoiling, and they have resistance to it, and obviously chance of critical hit is your chance to have time slow down and inflict a critical hit like what you've seen me do countless times at this point. At this point, the most important thing is getting those free shots in with the uh, disruption, especially when we're using the dagger, because that's kind of like our last resort. Now we're just gonna sneak in here and give this guy a hug. Okay, Scott did manage to land that. Let's see if we can kill this guy. There we go. Scott's actually doing a great job of keeping us and himself topped off. Uh, and then as soon as I say that, he just starts dropping. Alright. Let's see what these guys have on them. Health injection, perfect. We need to restore the stocks. A slow disruptor gun. Now, this one has a much higher rate of actually disrupting them but you'll get a lot less shots off. So this is more something for NPCs that they can't rapid fire the pistol like what we can. So this it's a better gun for them because when they do get those shots off, if they connect, they'll, they'll send the enemy recoiling that they shoot. So now that we've managed to bust some skulls here, let's see what's behind this door. Now, because of our jacket, we can actually pick the lock, which I will, we don't have to use that key. I think I will take this opportunity right now to see how you guys are doing. Also, this person right here, very important. Don't forget about that guy. Who are you? You don't look like a guard to me. Because I'm not. Name's Zachariah Manser, lieutenant in Ophir. You're the merchant who got himself kidnapped from the exchange. He protects me. But I doubt you came to help us out of the generosity of spirit. Am I correct in that presumption? Ian Manser, great master of the Technomancers, sent me to talk to you. Ah, I see, yes. One of my favorite clients. And a man with whom I, indeed, have some information to share. 
Aurora has discovered a new site. Not far from the Shadow Path. A site filled with objects of incredible condition. And even a relic, as rumor has it. News I'm sure the Great Master will be glad to hear. You should go now. Get back on the exchange as quick as you can. I'm not one to dally, Manson. I'll see you around, I'm sure. Okay. We freed the merchant. Left the merchants. Let's see what's in this chest. Just more. You're going to be seeing a lot of that metal components exploding lock, um, core components. And yeah, this is actually a great time to cut the episode off. So what I'm going to do is, when we go back and forth between this area and the next, the Vori that we knocked out are going to respawn, and they only spawn in groups of three. Super manageable, much better than those huge groups of like five and six that we were fighting before. So me and Scott will hopefully be able to take them down and start gearing up, getting some experience, getting some gear that we can either sell or we can upgrade. And so when I see you guys next time, I will be hopefully better kitted out. In the meantime, have a fantastic day.